If I were to tell you or someone else that my child never would have had life because of an abortion, most people would think that's because I was thinking about aborting her. But the reality of my daughter's life is that she wouldn't have had life because my own biological mother chose to end mine. That's the kind of survivor I am. In the summer of 1977, Melissa's mother was admitted to St. Luke's Hospital in Sioux City, Iowa with the intention of aborting her daughter. After acquiring her medical records years later, Melissa has been able to piece together the events of those early days. She found her entry into this world was anything but easy. I was born on August 29th of 1977 after a five-day onslaught of a saline infusion abortion. And for people who aren't aware of what that is, a saline infusion abortion actually involves injecting a caustic salt solution into the amniotic fluid that surrounds the fetus. And the intent of that salt solution is to scald the fetus to death from the outside in. And so over that five-day period, I was subjected to that salt solution. And my biological mother was given rounds of Pitocin to induce her labor with me and ultimately dispel my dead body from her womb. Jonathan Taylor is a doctor of osteopathy at Creighton University and currently practices family medicine in Sioux City, Iowa. As a former OBGYN, Dr. Taylor has studied the effects and procedures of both early and late-term abortions. I talked with him to learn more about the devastating effects a late-term saline abortion has on a baby. Uh, Melissa explained to us that she survived a saline infusion abortion or salt poison abortion. Can you tell us what that entails for her and the baby? I cannot imagine the tissue destruction that must happen, what it does to the skin, the intestines, the lining on the inside of the baby because the fluid goes into the stomach and a little bit that goes into the lungs. Unfortunately, in her case, did not severely destroy her lungs. Um, most babies that die were just basically scalded to death by a chemical reaction. From the, the strong the saline salt solution. solution that's very, very potent. How long does it take for a baby to die then? Over an hour and there would be convulsions and the, the baby would um, usually die inside the mom. But like I said, they would stop doing this one and switch to a different kind because too many of the babies were living and they were calling them candy apple babies because they were, the skin was just stripped off their body. It looked like an apple because it was just like scalding. Now, when the baby's thrashing like that, would the mother feel that late in pregnancy then? Absolutely. So she knows that the baby is going through quite a bit of turmoil and trauma and Correct. anguish. Correct. And uh, she'd be having some pains too because this is not going to be a happy event. Number one, she denied the person as a person. Number two, she's uh, going through labor. And then she vaginally delivers a baby, which Usually. the abortionist hopes is dead, correct? Correct. From what I've been told, they did leave me on the bedside mm -hmm. table for dead, believing, obviously, that I should be dead. And they tended to my biological mother. And as they were caring for her, I started to make some small grunting noises and some movements. And the nurse stepped in, and they started to provide me with that medical care.